Right. The University of London is a recognized institution around the globe and, and is highly ranked amongst, amongst the many universities out there, and in particular to, to when it comes to the legal discipline. Um, University of London stands out um, in the world rankings and the University of London's program of LLM, the LLM program is indeed diverse and, and has a lot to offer to a student who wishes to who wishes to boost up their career uh, in the law, their legal career prospects. And in order to discuss that today, the Blackstone School of Law um, happens, to, happens to be the only senior postgraduate law school in Punjab, basically, which is a recognized teaching center to offer the University of London's LLM program. To, to contemplate upon, them, upon that further, we, we have among our panel members, Mr. Saad Vaseem, who happens to be the regional advisor, South Asia for the University of London programs. And we also have Dean Helen Kansaki, Dean of LLM University of London. A very warm welcome to, to both of you, first of all. Um, can Thank you just you. start um, with, with a brief introduction of yourselves um, before we dive in into the substantive bit of the of the session. Helen, on to you. Okay. Um, good morning, I think, everyone. Um, so I'm Professor Helen Zamthaki. Everybody calls me Helen. I am the Dean of um, the Postgraduate Laws Programs of the University of London. My academic position is that of Professor at University College London, the Law School, um, and I'm also a visiting professor at uh, Queen Mary University of London, the School of Law. Uh, and the reason why I have this dual position is because the LLM, as you know, is um, uh, academically run uh, by uh, UCL and QMUL. And I think this is exceptionally important because these are the two top 10 law schools in the world at the moment. Uh, so the emphasis for me as a dean is to offer a program of quality, one that is at a par with top programs in London from UCL and QMUL. And to that extent, we have very rigid um, quality assessment and, and, and um, uh, external scrutiny from uh, a number of bodies, including our six external examiners, all senior professors from different universities in the UK, who are there to confirm that our standards are what um, we aspire to have. Um, we also have a management committee with senior professors from uh, UCL and QMUL, led by the Dean of the Law School, uh, Professor Pete Egghout um, at UCL, and um, the um, She's not a dean, uh, it's Professor Penny Green, but her title is, I think, head of the law school at QNUL, um, right. plus senior professor right. to deal with, with exams. So um, my personal expertise is that of legislative drafting, um, and those of you in the field might, might know me. Um, I have an experience of 26 years as a teaching and researching academic, and it is my pleasure to be here. Um, well, I'd like to add here, um, Helen, to you. I I did my LLM from University College London as well, uh, where where you where you are at the moment. Uh, before we go on to Saad Wasim, may I also add here that um, if any of the viewers do have any questions, please put that down in the chat box, and we'll be happy to answer as we go along. On to you, Saad Wasim, now, please. Thank you, Emil. Thank you, Blackstones. Uh, thank you, Helen, for being part of this. For uh, thank you, Blackstones, for organizing this session. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be on the platforms hosted by Blackstones. Um, as mentioned in my introduction, I'm Saad Wasim. I'm the Regional Advisor for South Asia for University of London Worldwide. I've been working uh, with University of London for almost eight to nine years now, and I think it's been a wonderful journey with them. I've seen uh, the growth in Pakistan, and I think we've put a lot of hard work on most of our programs. I think this is a very important event because we just launched the LLM program in Lahore and um, Blackstone is the only institution in Lahore and Punjab to offer this program. So I think that's 
uh, I think a wonderful news for all the audience. They would be providing teaching support for the LLM program. Um, I think academically, uh, Helen will be talking about the program, but it's very pertinent to mention that two of the lead colleges that provide the academic direction to this program, which is uh, UCL and Queen Mary, both are very renowned colleges of University of London, highly ranked. And I think that makes the program much more credible, much more, I would say, uh, reputable. And it's something that I would definitely recommend all the people wanting to do the LLM program. And I think one key point to somehow highlight in my introduction is that we were trying to somehow look into a bursary for this program for several years. And I am very thankful to Helen to consider Pakistan in that list. And we've been able to somehow successfully get a 40% bursary for Pakistani students. I also know that Blackstones is also giving a 50% discount to most of its candidates as well. So uh, hats off to both uh, Helen and Blackstones to providing this big opportunity in bursary for all our prospective candidates. So that's primarily from my end. I primarily look into Pakistan and South Asia and I'm there to support our institutions to help them and also guide them. So I'm looking forward to this session and uh, I would once again thank Blackstone for organizing this session and I hope for a wonderful one hour ahead. Well, it's a, it's a pleasure for us to, for Blackstone to have, to have you both on board today with us. Um, Moving on swiftly on to the, the questions that we have for today. Um, Helen now, Helen, what really are the entry requirements of this LLM University of London program? Um, what would you say on that? Okay, so as you know, uh, as you know, but also as the audience knows, um, UCL okay. is, is highly selective um, with uh, uh, the LLM. Um, so um, it, it is, uh, exceptionally selective and so is QMUL. The program that we offer is offered as uh, a um, contribution to the open access policy of the universities. So the aim of the LLM is to open up UCL and QMUL uh, by the University of London to students who would not normally make it um, to in the selection criteria. So we have um, uh, left it uh, intentionally quite open. Uh, yes, if you have a um, an LLB, a, a recognized LLB, uh, then you go straight into the LLM. If you don't, and if you have a uh, degree in any other discipline, then you start with the entry point of PGD, postgraduate diploma, and then you move on to the LLM. Even if you have no degree at all, but you have relevant professional experience of five years in a field, you can acquire entry via the postgraduate certificate. So you do your postgraduate certificate, then the diploma, then the LLM. But let me clarify something which I think is very important. As a student, irrespective of which entry level you're at, you're a student of the postgraduate laws programs of the University of London. Your entry point is only relevant in that you start. This is your starting point. Once you complete the first five modules in a postgraduate certificate, you're automatically moved to the postgraduate diploma. Once you complete those 10 modules, you then, you're then automatically moved to the LLM. So your entry point is really relevant. So in, and in that respect, I would say you have five years to complete the program. <clears throat> so in that respect, I would say um, the entry requirements are almost non-existent. I've had um, a, um, I always say this story, I, had a, I have had a um, captain to an oil tanker who uh, did not study anything at all, but wanted right. to learn more about um, sort of shipping and maritime law. Um, he has the LLM now, and in fact, he completed it within three and a half years. Um, I have a lot of doctors, a lot of medics who do medical law and ethics. We have a huge chunk of lawyers, of course, but there's a lot. There's also a lot of people who do um, who work, for example, in HR human resources and they want to know more about common law and so they get their LLM there. So we have almost a 50-50 uh, distribution between lawyers who go straight to the LLM and complete it normally between one and 2.3 years 
and those who are from different disciplines or no discipline at all, and they tend to take a bit longer, not because we make them take longer, but because um, they take things slowly and they combine this with their work and family commitments. So to answer, to go back to your question, <clears throat> entry requirements, almost zilch. Right, right, I see. Um, we do have a question in furtherance to that, Mr. Saad, then. What do, you, what do you think are the career prospects when an aspiring law student contemplates on attaining a postgraduate LLM degree from the University of London? Um, Saad, we can't hear you. Saad, we can't hear you. Well, if you look into the market specifically for Pakistan, and uh, if you look at people who are working either in the legal fraternity, people who are on the academic side, or people who are also working in-house, I think um, to start your career with an LLB is perfectly fine. We mostly see that that people have an LLB, they start practicing. Uh, they also at times who want to become tutors. But I think now things are getting a little different. And most uh, employers, if you talk about corporates or top institutions or universities, prefer someone with an LLM. And as you probably know that it's very difficult for people to somehow leave their job and go for an LLM and come back and probably start again. So this proposition of doing LLM alongside their studies, uh, alongside their work, has become something very positive. And I think in the last two to three years, and especially because of COVID, I think that's also somehow made it a, a more natural choice where people would want to do the LLM from a distance. And if you talk about our program, it can definitely help uh, with your growth in a corporate organization. It can help you in your growth if you're teaching at a certain university or at an institution. And if you're also practicing. So I think uh, if you're practicing and you have an LLM, um, at times I think it does add value. Of course, the bar might be the most suitable thing, but I've seen people wanting to do both the bar and the LLM because they feel having that on their card or visiting card can add value to the service and the clients would definitely want that. So I think having an LLM is definitely the right way forward. In Pakistan, it's much needed and it's something that all employers sort out for. So um, that's my take on how the LLM can help you. It's just like somebody having a bachelor's degree and then doing an MBA because uh, in Pakistan, you've seen that uh, just a bachelor's degree is not enough to work uh, or go up to a certain level. So that's the same case with an LLM. That's what I foresee. Um, very, very rightly said, as as a student of law who also um, did the LLM from the University of London, and I am a practicing lawyer now in Pakistan, mm -hmm. I know this for a fact that an LLM degree from the University of London, it definitely boosts boosts up your career prospects in particular when it's when it's a job that you are seeking in governmental departments or where you're seeking tenders or procurement related areas uh, in those areas an llm is in particular especially highlighted that they'll give extra marks to the person who has an llm from the university of london as well so that's that's a very positive thing for the person who wishes to do an llm from the University of London and the Blackstone University. It definitely offers that um, to the students in Pakistan. On to Helen. Um, Helen, this LLM postgraduate law degree from the University of London, um, does it allow the readers of law to specialize in a certain, in a certain area or discipline? So um, thank you for the question. Let me just add to the previous question. We know we have, at the moment, we have more than two and a half thousand students worldwide. We know that 91% of those students get to the job of their destination, so the job of their dreams, within a year from graduation. We also know that 76% of our students report a promotion within their employment, their existing employment, within the first year of their graduation. So there is statistics and evidence to show that an LLM from a reputable university like the University of London can assist both in, the, um, secure, in securing the employment of your choice, but also yeah. in your progression as uh, within your, the exist, your existing career. 
I also need to add, before I get onto the question, that um, the structure of the university is such, so the structure of the program is such that you can take small chunks at a time. And I have a large number of lawyers who um, amass credit, so they get, um, they, they get uh, modules from the program as part of their continued professional development. They get one module at a time, and then at the end of the five years, they get the LLM as well. So there's um, double value there too. Mm. Talking about specializations, well, we offer um, the largest menu, of course, is in the market. So we have 68 courses. Now, if you multiply this, this by four modules, you just get a grip of what we have. Um, so 68 courses, and we are adding at the moment. So um, there are 32 specializations. Do not ask me to right. recite them. After the age of 50, ladies and gents, memory goes. So, and I'm well above 50. So um, we have 32 specializations, um, but you can also get uh, the LLM as a generic LLM. So if you're interested in corporate law, there's about five or six different specializations that you can um, uh, opt for. In, it is important, so I need to make two points, important points. One, as you progress towards your LLM, you can pick up the postgraduate certificate and postgraduate diploma. How does that happen? You need to complete 16 modules, one six, 16 modules for the LLM. When you pass your first five modules, you can apply to the university to be awarded the, the postgraduate certificate. Once you add another five, so you're now on your 10th module towards the LLM, you can apply to get your postgraduate diploma. And then once you complete the 16, a total of 16, so five plus five plus six, you can apply for the LLM. Now, each of those three awards can be in a different specialization. So if you are interested in, for example, commercial law, you can start with your postgraduate diploma in say company law. So you have your postgraduate certificate in company law you can have your postgraduate um, uh, certificate in, for example, international commercial law and your LLM in commercial law. So right. there is a huge value in doing that. If, on the other hand, you're not interested in that sort of thing and you just want, and we have quite a few students who are there just because they want to expand their knowledge, um, mm. then you can uh, select your own courses and not have a specialization. For example, um, we had a, um, a student who worked for the United Nations and she was interested in uh, humanitarian laws or human rights, but she also wanted to learn about corporate law uh, as part of her career progression. She did that, not a problem. So um, loads of options. Right. Let me uh, let me answer one of the questions that has been put forth to us. The LSAT um, is not required for the LLM program, I reckon. Um, and um, in addition to that, Mr. Saab, can I just ask, how do you relate and connect uh, the HEC um, recognition and the Bar right. Council's recognition when it comes to the LLM program from the University of London? Um, if you talk about the recognition of our programs, uh, we are the oldest transnational provider in Pakistan, uh, foreign transnational education provider. And we have definitely been supporting the HEC when it was developing the t &E policy as well. Uh, so we've been there in Pakistan for more than 30 years. We are the most credible foreign university offering our programs in Pakistan. All our programs are recognized by the HEC. If you talk about the LLB program, if you talk about our uh, other programs and the LLM programs. So the bar councils understand the credibility of the programs. They understand the credibility and the ranking of University of London colleges. So specifically, if you look at UCL and Queen Mary, both of them being probably ranked in the top 10 law schools in the UK. So I think uh, we understand that University of London is a highly ranked university and their programs are very credible. And I think the same uh, has been the case for our LLM program. We see that students have given a lot of faith and trust on our LLB program. And now with the bursary in place, I see a lot of students wanting to do the LLM from University of London. We do offer 
um, I would definitely like to mention here there's a number of other foreign providers operating an LLM program. But I think and I see that people have a lot of trust on University of London because of its credibility. It's a university which is almost 170 years old. And I think the bar councils and the HEC completely recognize that. And I think uh, we are lucky to be working with our bar councils and the support that we get from them is highly appreciated. So the summary to the answer would be that we're definitely recognized by all the bar councils and by HEC. And uh, the faith that students have on University of London is something that we're, we're very proud of, and especially the parents uh, definitely uh, I would like to mention here that parents have put uh, a lot of faith on us in the last 30 years and uh, we have also tried our best to fulfill the requirements and expectations of our students and the parents and we will continue to do so specifically for our new programs that are entering like the LLM in Lahore and uh, we will definitely support them. I know Helen is very proactive, very supportive and inshallah once things are better with COVID we will see her in Pakistan as well. And um, I, I think she's come to Pakistan before as well. So that would be a pertinent question that you can ask her as well. So that's my side of the view about HEC and recognition. Right. Um, Helen, uh, for, for the students who basically um, it, who, who get this uh, external law LLM degree and then they wish to practice law in England, what are their career prospects? What is your take on that? So as you know, the um, access to the legal professions has changed in the last year. Uh, so really, you do not need a qualifying law degree like you did before. Uh, you just need to complete. Um, you just need to complete four tests in four different areas, um, the SQEs. Um, our program um, is uh, obviously a postgraduate program. Um, it does uh, give you ammunition towards the examinations, much uh, like any other mm -hmm. postgraduate program in, uh, in the United Kingdom. And so you're at the same par as anybody else. Can I just say that um, the degree does not carry uh, a designation for distance learning. It is a, an LLM degree of the University of London undertaken on a part-time right. basis. Uh, and why is that? Because the level uh, of uh, achievement is the same. Now, whether you did that um, uh, uh, you know, within the class or outside the class is neither here nor there. And in the past, I had to persuade people that this is the case. I think now with COVID, we've all understood that this is just another mode of delivery. What I would say and what I tell my UCL colleagues as well is this. Look, in the last two years, you've been offering at UCL the LLM via distance learning. The only difference between you guys and me is that we've been doing this since the 1800s, so we know how to deal with it. <laughs> so here we are. Right. Mr. Saad, how do you, how do you see the fee structure um, for this LLM program? I think uh, if you look at uh, our program and you look at the fee structure of other programs, uh, we are definitely uh, very competitive in that regards. Maybe uh, our fee may be a little higher, but now with the bursary in place, I think it comes to a level where it is very much affordable. Um, I would definitely like to ask our prospective candidates to always compare the fee with a foreign university rather than a local university. At times I've seen people comparing the fee with a local LLM program. So if you want to compare the fee, you need to compare it with a foreign university. And if you look at some good universities in the UK, you see that the rough fee structure for a yearly program is around £19,000. And then you add on the living cost, traveling, it comes up to around £30,000. And that's the fee for a one year program. If you compare our fee, I think with the discount in place and everything, it comes up to something around £6,000. And then if you're living in your own country, uh, in your own city and in the comfort of your own home, there's no cost or expenses when it comes to living. So it is, I think, uh, much, much cheaper than going abroad. It's the same quality program that you can get abroad. Uh, the curriculum is exactly the same. Uh, academically, it's as vigorous as you would study in the UK. So I think it's definitely priced at a point where it is very much sellable. Uh, it will give you value for money. 
and uh, I would always recommend people to compare it with the degree abroad uh, because you, at the end of the day, you're getting a university in London degree rather than a local degree from Pakistan. And if you were to right. do the if you were to do the same program um, at UCL or QMUL at the moment, so this year, it's about twenty six thousand uh, pounds just right. for the That's fees. Let alone, uh, you know, surviving in London. And as you know, um, this will take you. I mean, it is surviving in London, so you would need about what fifteen hundred pounds per month at least to survive. I'm not talking about leave decently. So the starting point for setting the fees internally within the program is that the fees themselves are one third of the fees that you would spend in London, leave, uh, living expenses aside. But of course, with the um, reduction in fees that we have, the bursary that uh, Saad fought for and managed to achieve, um, that's even less. So it's now one fourth of the money you would spend, the fees you would spend, let alone anything else. And of course, you know, you are within your own family, you are still working, you are still earning, you are not um, uh, deprived from the opportunity to get your promotion because you're still working where you are. So for me, um, value is immense. Right. Um, Mr. Saad, can I just also ask you here? So the nature of getting a legal degree a law degree in Pakistan is that now you need to undergo um, a significant time period of five years to attain the law degree in Pakistan. So how do you see that um, when you add an LLM from the University of London to it? I couldn't get your question. Could you come again, please? I, I got the five year thing. So, so I'll, I'll repeat that question to you. So the degree, this LLM degree, is this beneficial for those students who basically have a local degree from Pakistan of five years. I think uh, our biggest target audience for the program is definitely the local uh, graduates rather than the foreign graduates. I think foreign graduates definitely would want to do this as well. But I would say that most of the people who do our LLP program in Pakistan, uh, they do it in Pakistan because they're saving up to go for an LLM abroad. Of course, COVID has disrupted that and they are not left with many options and they would definitely want to look at our program as well. But mostly I feel that the LLM program is for people who've done the local program and who would want to add on to their profile with a foreign qualification. So the program is very much open for people who've done the local program. It's much more suited for them. They will get a flavor of a foreign qualification because their first degree was a local degree. So I think it's highly recommended for people who've done local degree. Because if you look at the foreign uh, qualified, they've already done a foreign qualification. And of course, this the door is always open for them as well. And I think with COVID, I don't know how things would change, but this program seems to be the best option available for them. So I would definitely recommend this program for both the local graduates and the foreign graduates. And I feel that both of them can take benefit of the program, the academic side of the program as well, and the network that we have. It's just not the academic program that we're offering. It's it's a very strong network that we have. Uh, we've got people doing this program throughout a number of countries. You will be able to connect with them. You will be able to learn from their experience as well. Helen does a number of, I would say, uh, segments alongside the program, which could be very helpful for students doing this program. So I believe not only that they're getting the academic excellence, but they're also going to be part of us, uh, I would say, a wider target audience or, or a wider network, which can help them for their growth academically. And also, uh, I think they could help with reference to capacity building, with reference to the growth in the organization that they work with as well. So all of these are add-ons with doing a foreign university program, and especially a program from a university which is more than 170 years old now. So I think that's my take on that. I'd like to add on to that, that um, getting on to this LLM program, not only does it helps you towards your towards the boosting of your career prospects, it actually also connects you to, to a huge network of other people who also attained um, this law degree and got connected with the University of London. Um, and I also wish to reiterate here that Blackstone is only is the only institute in the entire Punjab which is a recognized recognized um, teaching center to offer the University of London London's 
LLM program. And in order to further facilitate the students, Blackstone offers a considerable amount, considerable amount of scholarship to the students as well, um, going up to at least around 50% of the scholarship. So that's what Blackstone offers to facilitate um, the students. Um, if there are any other questions that the students out there would like to ask from us. Um, on the on Blackstone and its value, if I may add, from the point of view of, of like myself as the dean, um, I am aware and the university is aware that, that there might be cowboy colleges out there who might uh, pretend to teach the program. Uh, the reality of the matter is this, in order to become a recognized center, you have to go through very strict evaluation and assessment, not just from the point of view of buildings and facilities, but also from the point of view of the CV of academic staff, um, from the point of view of um, experience in teaching, how many students you're observed and monitored, how many of your students pass and at what you know what sort of progress um, uh, they um, offer and what their achievements are so it is a real partnership with the university of london that guarantees that the teaching and services of the college in question what we call the teaching center is at a par of with what we aspire to offer centrally within the university of london um, I um, would stress that the university only recognizes recognized centers. So any tuition you receive from Blackstone is relevant and is actually on the basis of our current materials because it is only Blackstone and our students that have, have access to those materials. If the rest of the institutions, I call them cowboys that might pretend to um, to be recognized by the University of London um, are exactly what I've just said, cowboys. No um, access to our materials, no access to the many joint works that we do together. And in fact, one of the reasons why I decided to be present here is to ensure and reassure you that this Blackstone is the only recognized teaching center in Punjab. So if you want to, stay, to um, study with us, this is the place where you must uh, go to and there's no other center that is recognized by us so there is absolutely no guarantee at all I would say the absolute opposite that anyone else is delivering the sort of service that you're um, you know that you deserve and that your money should be buying you absolutely this this confirms and um, this this rather confirms that Blackstone actually it does present a viable opportunity for the students, the Pakistani students, um, to to attain an LLM degree while residing in Pakistan. So, it, Mr. Sadi, to add before we conclude. Uh, hello? Yeah. We couldn't hear you, Emma. I think there was some issue with the network. Mr. Saad. Right. Mr. Saad, what I was saying was, before we conclude the session, do you have any final words for today? Mr. Saad, can you get me there? Are you there? I can hear you, but it's cutting quite a lot. So Saad, if you could... Um... Saad Ahmad is asking whether you have any concluding words before we finish concluding the session. Words. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Helen, for the help. Um, I would just like to mention at the end that um, we've talked about the key aspects of the program. We've talked about um, the process of recognition and how valuable our recognized teaching centers are. So that's something that I would like to mention again. Um, I would definitely like to mention here that the program is highly credible. Um, it's something that uh, a lot of people who are looking for the LLM should look into. Uh, the bursary is something that we've worked quite a lot on to come up to this level. It's not something that was very easy. So I would definitely like to stress upon this factor that students should take full use of that. And uh, I'm hoping that things would be better and we could have Helen over to Pakistan and show her the hospitality that we have for uh, foreigners. and. Uh, 
I think that's something that I look forward to as well. And other than that, I think Blackstones is a, a good institution of ours. They will be definitely helping you academically. Helen would be there to support you. I'll be there to support you operationally as well. And uh, we will try to make the journey as smooth as possible for all our students. And um, we look forward to welcoming uh, the batch this year. And uh, Helen would be having a welcome session with those students. And I'll be coming face to face as well. So that's all from my end. I wish Blackstones all the best with the LLM program and the LLB pro program. And uh, thank you, Emmet, for being the moderator and hosting this session. Thank you, Helen, for taking out time for this session as well. And I wish all the prospective students all the best with whatever decision they take. Thank you. Thank you very much, Helen. And Mr. Saad Blackstone does indeed offer this opportunity to gain a prestigious degree from a world-class institution through through the mode of action obviously thank you very much professor helen and mr saad it was indeed a pleasure having you on, on board um and we look forward to welcoming um the coming batch for the program thank you thank you everyone bye. Thank, thank you, you. bye, bye.